I think Joe Biden has been an awful president. He's awful on the border, awful on inflation, awful on the economy, awful on avoiding war in Europe and uh, in the Middle East, awful on crime. Virtually nothing can I point to is better today as I speak to you in February of 2024 than was in February of 2020. Unemployment was lower. COVID hadn't yet taken over. Uh, The uh, overall growth in salaries was increasing. Inflation was non-existent. February of 2020, compared to February of 2024, everything is worse. You guys get it. Now, you'll start to compare. People will say, well, COVID's over. COVID was going to end no matter what. And COVID ended for most of us by May of 2020 or June of 2020. Certainly, it did for the Travis household. I'll talk about that in a moment. But I want to begin with this. Biden is bad. His advisors may be worse. And I just want to dive into this particular decision to go to the Seth Myers, uh, to go to the Seth Myers interview instead of the Super Bowl and everything surrounding it. So I always like to think one of the best ways to prepare to make decisions is to actually pretend that you are the decision maker long before you have to make a decision. So let me just ask all of you, pretend that you are sitting in the Biden advisory chairs and they come to you and they say, hey, we got some opportunities, guys. President's always getting asked for interviews. President can do basically any media outlet in the country that he wants to do at any moment in time. They come to you and they say, hey, we got two options. Recent close vicinity. We can do a Super Bowl sit-down interview. Tens of millions of people watching. It's a tradition. It's relatively easygoing. We know that the audience is massive for white, black, Hispanic, Asian. Because of Taylor Swift, maybe there'll be more women watching than even normally do. It's one of the biggest audiences that you could ever have for an interview, and it's a tradition that the president regularly does it, and it's from CBS News, which, by and large, is not an organization that rips the Biden administration to shreds. Or, we can say no to that, and we can go do Seth Meyers' show. Some of you out there are like, kind of like me, like, when does Seth Meyers' show even air? I know Jimmy Kimmel. I know Stephen Colbert. I know Jimmy Fallon. Those are all the guys that are on, I believe, at 11.30 p.m. Eastern. Seth Meyers is on after Jimmy Fallon. So let me just make this clear to you. Basically, nobody watches Jimmy Fallon. And then when Jimmy Fallon's show ends, Seth Meyers is the guy that comes on after Jimmy Fallon and even fewer people watch Seth Meyers' show. The Biden administration decided to do that show instead of doing the Super Bowl. That by itself should get everybody who advises Joe Biden fired. So that was a ridiculous decision made by the Biden administration. That's not all. They also said, okay, we're going to do Seth Meyers for, I don't know, an audience of 800,000 people. Maybe not even, I don't think even a million people watch his show on average. And in the afternoon, because they tape all these shows in the afternoon, they're not live, FYI, we're then going to have Biden in the basement of Rockefeller Center, where they filmed this, on 6th Avenue in New York City, we're going to have he and Seth Myers go get ice cream cones, and we're going to answer questions from the media about the war in Israel. And Biden is going to make news talking about the possibility of a ceasefire while he's wearing a suit holding a friggin' ice cream cone in his hand, and he's going to talk to the media in between bites of his ice cream, and this is going to make him seem more reasonable and put us all in touch with Grandpa Joe. They said no to the Super Bowl, yes to Seth Meyers, and then they put an ice cream cone in his hand while he talked about the most serious issue facing 
the world just about today. Now, there are still, media doesn't talk about it, American hostages in Gaza. They are being held hostage still. Lake and Riley was just killed by an illegal immigrant at the southern border, which remains wide open, where 8 million-plus illegal immigrants have entered the country since Joe Biden became president. This is the definition of a bad look. It isn't funny. It isn't likable. It isn't accessible. I had some fun with this on Clay and Buck earlier. Grown men getting ice cream is weird if they aren't with their kids and they aren't with their wife or girlfriend and they're not with their grandkids. This is a weird thing to do. It's weird to go get your own ice cream cone and stand around licking it by yourself like Joe Biden did. It's weird by itself. To combine it, and about half of you, by the way, agree with me on that, to combine it with addressing major geopolitical situations is absurd. Now, I want to give credit here. I've been very critical of George W. Bush. I think the decision in the 21st century that is the single worst not related to COVID that any politician made was to go to war in Iraq. You talk to anybody who knew me back in 2003, 2002, when I was in law school, I didn't want to go to war in Iraq. I ended up being right about that. We spent trillions of dollars. I don't think we changed anything in Iraq. I don't think replacing Saddam Hussein made us any safer. I think we wasted trillions of dollars to say nothing of thousands of lives, and we gained virtually nothing for it. I think Dick Cheney led George W. Bush into the most disastrous decision not related to COVID made by any politician in the 21st century, in my opinion. But you know what George W. Bush did? After a video of him talking about the situation in Iraq while golfing went super, super viral in Fahrenheit 911, if I remember, 911, whatever it was called, the Michael Moore documentary. After that went viral, Bush basically decided, I'm not going to play golf anymore. If we're going to be at war, it looks bad for me to be at golf. Now, look, I suck at golf. I enjoy playing. I'm not saying that the president can't go on vacation. I'm not saying that the president can't play golf or tennis or whatever, go swimming. Whatever he or she does that gives him and his family a little bit of a, a, a little bit of relaxation in the midst of an otherwise very difficult job. I'm not going to say you can't do it. Okay, I'm not going to take shots at it. I'm not going to say it's impermissible or somehow unacceptable. But I do think it is incredibly important to think about the method in which you address serious things and putting somebody in a suit holding an ice cream cone with a late-night TV host who's supposed to be a comedian, talking about the situation in Israel and whether or not there's going to be a Gaza ceasefire with a freaking vanilla ice cream cone in his hand is so tone-deaf that as bad as Biden is, his advisors may be worse. And this might all be a natural outgrowth of Joe Biden just being really a bad communicator because I think he's got dementia and his staff is terrified to let him talk to anybody. But how would you make the decision to do Seth Meyers and not the Super Bowl? And how would you then make the decision to go talk about the situation in Israel while you're standing with an ice cream cone in your hand? It reeks of what is now, we believe, a made-up story, but it feels like Biden's Marie Antoinette moment. Instead of let them eat cake, it's let them eat ice cream. You aren't treating a serious situation seriously. And I don't blame the media for asking questions of him of a serious nature there because they don't get access to Joe Biden very often. So they have to take advantage of any opportunity they have to be able to ask these questions. I think it was a bad look. 
I think it was a bad decision. And I think if he really wanted to know why he's getting his ass kicked eight months from the election, it's not only because Biden's been a bad president, it's because he's got a lot of really bad advisors.